So as you probably know, I'm building a linear supply for an RD6006 power controller. And so far I've got as far as rewinding uh, both of the transformers I intend to use. Now, there are many ways you could go about doing this. I'm not suggesting this is the, the best way of doing this. This is just what I had to hand. So I thought I would uh, combine building the supply with making some videos on rewinding transformers and setting up a supply. But it does give quite a good result in having a pair of transformers like this. You will get quite a good um, back end power supply. The target is around 60 volts at 6 amps, so it's quite a high power uh, supply. So it's 360 watts. Uh, these two cores combined give me a fairly respectable about 425 450 VA, which uh, accounting for any losses should be enough to give me the full 360 watts output and that's what I want to test here. Again if you've watched the previous videos you'll know that I've wound these at least for the UK in a bit of an odd way in that I've wound them as two 120 volt transformers and I have them connected in series so the primaries are in series and the secondaries are in series as well. Um, it doesn't mean of course if I wanted to I could rewire it as a 120 volt unit but um, that wasn't really the intention, it's just something I could do. But really the idea is to show that there are, there's more than one way to configure these things, there's more than one way to go about building this sort of thing. I could have just bought an off the shelf transformer, single transformer and shoehorned that into the case but um, as I said the point is to make these videos and demonstrate rewinding transformers. Um, it's not all that difficult, it's not all that time consuming. So far for both transformers I spent about five or six hours winding them. I've got about another hour to go to um, put the outer cover on uh, and then that's it. Uh, of course wiring them like this you do need to make sure you keep track of the start and the end of each winding you do need to make sure the wound in phase or wide in phase otherwise um, you'll get sort of some odd problems. Apologies as ever for the flickering on the Kunking. Um, the reason I went for this particular load was twofold. One is I like to demonstrate and test cheap uh, Chinese equipment to see if it's actually any good. Um, but also with this one it goes up to 400 watts and most of the others that are commonly available unless you start spending a lot of money uh, only go up to 300 and that's not enough to test this supply. Now I could of course have combined two but um, as I say I wanted a single uh, unit and I do have a number of these to test so I wanted uh, a electronic load where I could buy more than one and run them for long periods without uh, being concerned about them being tied up. Okay so next step on this uh, build is to test the two transformers now that I've got them wound. I've got them hooked up uh, in a fairly uh, simple form so as I say they are uh, wired to the primaries are in series and the secondaries are in series. I've got them going through a standard bridge rectifier and I've got uh, two capacitors. Don't worry the capacitors say 40 volts, um, I've got them wired in series so effectively this is an 11,000 microfarad 80 volt capacitor. I've then got them going through to the electronic load and we're monitoring the uh, DC voltage on the meter. I'm using my VDB10 again so I've got this set to give me the nominal voltage that we have here and the target as I say this is to drive an RD6006 and it has an over voltage um, protection on the input of around 70 volts or just over 70 volts uh, and it draws about between 2 and 4 watts um, when it's uh, not driving a load, that's just the display and control electronics. So if you're not familiar with designing circuits like this then what you'll find is that a completely unloaded transformer will have an artificially high voltage on its secondary winding and that will very quickly droop when you apply even a, a fairly small load. So that's something to bear in mind. If you take the open circuit voltage for the transformer then you might find it's a volt or so higher than you expect but don't necessarily correct that by changing the winding ratio straight away until you've tested it because you might find that as soon as you apply even a nominal load then it will drop down to uh, the voltage that you require. So what I'm looking for is 
something that does not go below 58 volts uh, and does not go over 70 volts uh, between uh, very light load, that's about 2 watts, up to 360 watts. It's quite a big range. The regulation also won't be quite as good as we would see when connected directly to the mains because the VDB10 does introduce some distortion in the sine wave uh, and that means that the uh, output from the transformers will droop slightly more than it would normally. It's only by about 2 or 3 volts but we do need to take that into account on a supply like this. Okay, I'll power up the supply. We can see that the voltage output completely unloaded is around 69.7 volts so that's easily within the protection cutout of the RD6006 uh, but we wouldn't want to go much higher than that. Incidentally I noticed on the previous video when I was showing this unit that the uh, displays don't always seem to uh, show up very well. So apologies if you can't read them, they're perfectly clear um, in real life. But what we're reading at the moment is um, 40 milliamps and 246 volts, which is the current uh, main supply that I have here. I'm not going to be changing this. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is when I do start to load this up, is this voltage will start to sag slightly, which wouldn't happen when I'm connected directly to the main. So we will see the output voltage dropping a volt or so lower than we would normally. Okay, so I'll switch on the load, wait for it to settle. So as you can see, I've got this set to constant resistance and such that it's given me around 2.2 watts, which is what the RD6006 that I have seems to draw. And so we're getting 69 volts, which is exactly what we're aiming for. It's under the 70 um, volt limit. That gives us a bit of overhead on the main supply. Uh, and also uh, make sure that we don't trigger the uh, over voltage input protection for the RD6006. What I'll do now is start to increase the load. Now unfortunately I can't leave this on for too long because there is no heat sinking on the rectifier. And I'm not using one of these at the moment. I've ordered some higher voltage versions of this. Um, these wouldn't overheat. But uh, currently the standard rectifier will get very hot very quickly once we start getting to higher loads. So I'll start increasing the load. Okay, so we're now at uh, just under 5 watts. And you can see what I mean about the voltage sagging very quickly. We're already down to under 69 volts. Um, but the rate this um, droops will decrease um, as the load increases it won't keep dropping at this rate. So we'll increase this uh, still further. You can see we're now to 44 watts. So we'll keep going up. So just over 100 watts and we're down to 64 volts. So we're now at 190 watts. So 217 watts, we're now at 61 volts. As I say, the lower target for this is 58 volts. But bear in mind, this will now be lower than it would be on true mains because of the distortion in the AC waveform that the VDB10 produces. So I'll keep going. Two hundred and forty watts. Three hundred and six. Three hundred and thirty. So that's now our target maximum low. So you can see we're down at uh, about 57 volts. So that's showing a volt lower than I actually want. However, once we get the proper rectifier in, which I designed it for one of these, of course, then that will be about one and a half volts higher. I'll just turn this off so the rectifier doesn't melt. 
Uh, so we'll get about one and a half volts higher than that uh, once we have the proper rectifier. And of course, when we're running directly from the mains, it will be a bit higher again. So as a rough estimate, I would guess, we'll be looking at um, slightly over 60 volts um, DC once we've got the proper rectifier and we're directly on the mains. Um, but it is looking very promising. I have actually run this for or each transformer separately uh, using one of these uh, for an hour or so and they, they barely get warm. So I do know that these are working well within their capacity. I do have to be careful here because this is uh, this is not an isolation transformer, so I don't want to touch uh, anything that's exposed. Uh, so as I say, it's looking very promising. The um, supply is behaving itself. If you can hear a hum, it's not coming from the transformers; it's coming from this unit. But as you can see, it's working quite nicely. We're drawing 6.3 amps, which is a bit higher than we would normally uh, expect to see. But it is working and uh, we're getting the output that we require. As I say, this will be up around 60, 61 volts uh, when we're on the mains with the correct rectifier. So, in other words, the windings of the transformers are correct. So I can finish winding the insulation onto these transformers and they're then ready to go into the supply. So the next question is what to do about uh, the rectifier and the smoothing capacitors. Um, I don't really want to use capacitors like this, uh, they're expensive, um, very bulky. I somehow doubt I would have space inside the case for them anyway. And also I wanted to show something a bit different. So I've gone for something I saw on eBay, which is a kit of parts. And what it is, it's um, just a PCB and 68 capacitors. So these are uh, 220 microfarad capacitors, 75 volts. Um, and that gives us a total of 11,000 microfarads, which is a bit more than we're currently seeing with the current setup. Uh, this also has nice uh, terminals, screw terminals, and it also has a space on the board for a rectifier. So we can fit a rectifier to the board if we want. And in fact, it does come with a rectifier. Uh, which is quite a nice one. This is um, 25 amp, 1000 volts. I'm, I may even try this because it does have a reasonably low forward voltage. Nowhere near as low as the, nowhere near as low as this, of course. But um, it will still be worth trying. It will. It is a significantly lower forward voltage drop than the one we're currently using, um, and it would make quite a, a, a neat um, arrangement. The reason I chose this is because it's almost exactly the same size as the cross-sectional area of the of the case I bought for the ride and supply uh, and in fact I was hoping to use some screening between the ride and controller and the transformers and this of course would be ideal so not only would it serve as a, uh, a capacitor bank uh, but also it would uh, act as a screen between the transformers and the ride and supply it's a partial screen because of course this will have the capacitors on it as well uh, and it will make quite a nice um, smoothing capacitor bank it will have a very low uh, ESR because of the fact that all the capacitors are in parallel so their uh, ESRs will be uh, added together so just to see what that may be I thought we'd do a quick test on one of the capacitors and see what it uh, reads as Okay, so I've pulled out the UT612. Uh, I was quite surprised when this package turned up and I looked at these, uh, these capacitors and uh, found out that they're actually Rubicon capacitors. I was expecting some very cheap uh, Chinese capacitors, but these are quite good quality if indeed they are Rubicon capacitors. And looking at them closely, they do appear to be genuine Rubicon capacitors. They don't have the a traditional um, poorly manufactured appearance of anything uh, cheap. Uh, they're properly packaged and um, I think they may actually be genuine Rubicon capacitors. So I'll get this attached to the meter and we'll see uh, what reading it gives us. Okay, so it's given us around 200 microfarads at uh, 0.2 ohms ESR. So if we uh, assume there are 68 of these in uh, parallel, then that will be uh, quite a good capacitor bank. 
I'll test a few more off camera just to make sure they're all the same but that should give us quite a nice uh, smoothing uh, capacitor arrangement. So the next step is I'll test this some more uh, off camera and uh, once I'm fully satisfied that it's all behaving itself I'll finish uh, insulating the transformers they'll then be complete and what I can then start doing is actually assembling this into the case and then once that's done we can start comparing it against the switch mode version that I made previously. One thing I haven't mentioned on this project so far is if this was a commercial project and it was a commercial product I was developing then I would put in place a pre-regulator between the DC linear supply and the RD6006 controller. In fact I've even purchased some devices to make one but looking at the performance I'm getting from the transformers on their own I doubt I will implement that. Uh, the way you go about it if you're not familiar with a pre-regulator is you would wind the transformers to give you a slightly higher output than you actually need. You then feed the resulting DC power into a pre-regulator and the idea is if the voltage starts rising above a certain point then the regulator starts to limit that voltage and um, it means that you can aim for a slightly higher loaded voltage without uh, exceeding the input protection voltage of your controller and the idea there of course is it means you can get um, a fairly well stabilized 65 volts or so going into your RD6006 uh, I haven't quite decided if I'm going to do that yet, I may well do that, but uh, if not I'll just use the uh, DC supply exactly as it is. It's just something worth considering if you're going to wind your own transformers, uh, because this is the point at which you really need to decide if you're going to do that.